head of AI and machine learning at Workday, a good friend of mine too. So welcome, Shane. Thank Happy to have you much. here today. Nice to see you again. It's been a while. Yeah. Well, and we actually just revealed uh, many things on stage, and thank you so much for tuning in to follow up on that. Uh, uh, but uh, we're going to talk about lots of things, generative AI, and I know, Shane, we really unveiled some groundbreaking use cases, not just in the keynote, but here on the Expo floor yeah. and throughout the week. Absolutely. But before we get into the what, which I think everybody is interested in learning more about, explain a little bit to our audience on what generative AI is. We don't want to make that assumption. Sure, absolutely. So generative AI obviously has burst on the scene, and all of a sudden it seems like something brand new. And it isn't something brand new. Some of the capabilities we yeah. see are brand new. Um, the techniques that we use in AI are kind of across the board in all kinds of things that aren't considered generative as well, but the, the, the distinguishing factor for generative AI is that it generates new content. So you might have something like a recommender system that's outputting, hey, you might like to buy you know, a dress yeah. or this shirt that I bought a couple days ago. Um, and we don't consider that generative AI, it's taking this shirt that already exists and it's recommending it to me. With generative AI, we build new content, right? So you say, hey, generate a script for me to talk about generative AI, and yeah. ChatGPT would do yeah. that for you. Pretty for good at it, too. It's pretty good at it, too. It's, you know, it, hopefully I'm better at it, otherwise I'll be out of a job soon. But uh, for now, it's, it's pretty good. So that's the thing about generative AI, it's when AI produces something new, a new image, new text, new language, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, and I know we've been using AI and ML at Workday for quite some time, and generative AI is just a new tool in our toolbox, right. so to speak. Right. Um, and we talked a lot about, not only this morning, but going forward this week, our unique and differentiated approach to, to not just generative AI, but AI and ML here at Workday. Mm -hmm. How does our commitment to prioritizing data quality really distinguish us as a trusted partner? In this yeah, case? yeah, that's a great question because I think you know you look around, you see these models that are producing these incredible outputs, and they're all very large, trained on really large data sets, yeah. uh, and that's awesome. They, it's definitely a place for that in the overall ecosystem, but there are some risks and challenges associated with it as well, right? So you might have a lot of data, and there might be some quality issues with that data. Large language models, which power a lot of the generative AI that we're yep. looking at today, are trained on broad swaths of the internet. Well, that contains a lot of great data and some challenging data. There are some scary things some that scary happen things. out in the dark Misinformation, of the disinformation, yeah. So they exist, potentially toxic content. Um, and so with Workday data, right, by design, it does not live on the internet. It's not part of what's trained yeah. in those large language models. And you don't want that, right? You, there's a reason why it's inside the Workday firewall yeah. if you're a customer. You want that to be something that is closely guarded but you do want to get the value out of it. And yeah. so with, with that high quality data, which also we have a lot of quantity, it's not as big as the whole internet, but yeah. we, you know, we have 60 million users and many hundreds of billions of records in our database. We can train models that are trained on that really high quality data that doesn't contain some of those those. Well, and what I problems. love about it, not only the unique data set, but it's factual. It truly is yeah. Yeah. facts about somebody's people, about their money, about yeah. how they run their business. So yeah. it's a, a unique advantage Absolutely. in that sense. And it really encodes how these businesses work and how the people inside those businesses run them and we can extract a lot of value from that using AI, including generative AI. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, before we get into what we're building, which I know we're going to talk about here, talk a little bit about uh, generative AI, uh, generative AI's, excuse me, unique strengths before we get into how we apply them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've, we touched on it already a little bit. Um, one of the unique strengths that it has is that it's very good at outputting what I'll call long form natural language, right? So the way a person would talk to you or respond to something, these new generative AI models are really good at that, and we haven't had that capability before. Yeah. So our, we have very language heavy products, right? We have learning content, we have help content, we have Q&A. All those things have to be written by a person, yeah. and that's pretty laborious, and so that's one place that we can really apply it is content creation. Um, and so that's one important strength. Other strengths are in the search domain. So we can use generative AI in all kinds of different ways to better understand content that's returned in a search or to better perform a search. And we actually are building products like that at Workday today. Yeah. Well, and the one I know, I, I've used it in some of my products in the, in the past as well as summarization too. That's one of the big right. things is yeah. really the ability to summarize many different sources and return a response to. It's just strong at that and so. Yeah, absolutely. And we announced a product like that in financials with contract summarization, so. Yeah, yeah. Um, good worked as data story uh, at work for our customers. So you talked a little bit about generative AI's unique strengths. Yeah. How are we applying those at Workday? And maybe some examples of that. You talked about contract analysis. Uh, yeah, contract analysis. Way. You know you, you know the ones that we've announced. <laughs> um, so you know that they're, they're- Put me on the spot. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kind of in that, that uh, the vein of what we just talked about. Yeah. Um, certainly content creation is the one that comes front of mind for everyone, right? Because you see that, you interact with ChatGPT. Most people have yeah. done that by now if you're interested in the space and what do you get back? You get back language that's new content that's been generated by the model. Yeah. So that's an important one for us if you want to generate things like career growth plans or job descriptions or other yeah. places, anywhere really in the products where you would want long form natural language, we can apply generative AI. Search we just touched on, summarization as well. That's a really big one. You yeah. generate a lot of content, 
hey, that's great. It's hard for a human to go through a lot of content, but a model can do that and produce for the human the parts that are relevant to them. So that's another place where, where well, we're Well, and especially apply. when we think about navigating Workday, remembering the names of reports, yeah. right, of other things, to be able to summarize that yeah. together and yeah. not have people kind of cross-navigate is really helpful. Yeah. And, um, some really exciting stuff coming back there. And I think what's really important to Workday, and please build on this, is making sure we're building the right things that add value for customers. So this technology is interesting. Yeah. It absolutely is, and, and some of it is hype, but it's really about how we leverage that technology to do those unique things, but focused on where our customers get value, not for the sake of it. Yeah, I mean, it would be really easy for my team to build a bunch of toys. <laughs> and right? they might want to, we don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, like, there's a, the aperture of things that we could do is way bigger than the things we should do yeah. and are going to do. Yeah. Um, and a big part of what we need right now is a good funnel with customer's input, customer signal to help us narrow that down to the things that are really going to provide a lot of value. Yeah. Um, you know, we have EA programs, early adopter programs here, and we leverage those pretty heavily right now in order to, to help identify what we should be doing. Yeah. Well, and I know we have dozens of AI and ML use cases already live. You do. Um, and how many, remind me, how many customers have adopted? Uh, over 3,000 now. Wow. So okay. more than 3,000 customers have opted into share data and, and use an ML feature, uh, which is awesome because that number at, my first rising was 2019 and that number was really <laughs> small back then. Uh, you probably remember. And uh, yeah, it's growing fast. Well, and I think it's important. It is our customer's data. We take it very seriously yeah. to you know, interest and, and respect that data and all of the above. So. Yeah, absolutely. I always say we're stewards of the data, right? It's Workday data because it's generated in our applications, but it belongs to the customer and we have to guard that data very closely. And they choose whether they want to share it too. It is, right. it is ultimately their choice. Well, I know on top of that, building a responsible and ethical use of generative AI is important to many people, but critically important to our core principles about um, delivering for the enterprise. So talk yeah. a little bit about how we do that at Workday. Yeah, so for one thing, um, the, the pace is very fast that we're delivering generative AI, but it could be faster if we weren't spending a lot yeah. of time in this area, right? So it is very important to us that we're very careful when we do things. Um, one is just the investment in the approach that we're taking. So I, I was talking about these really large scale models that are trained on broad swaths of the internet. They certainly have a place in the ecosystem. We do use them and we will use them in places where it's low risk and not sensitive data. Yeah. But we build our own AI. My team builds our own AI for Workday, Workday AI in large part because we have a lot of control of that. We can yeah. make it smaller, more domain specific, harder to attack, and we can really interpret those models really well. We have full control. So one is the fact that we're investing in actually building AI that is designed to be safe. Yeah. Um, certainly, we test all the time. Um, we do, we do, we've started a program inside ML now to do what's called red teaming. So this is a term from, from in, information security, yeah. which basically like, you act like an adversary, right? And so our team goes and tries to attack models and tries to get them to output things that we wouldn't want them to output. Yeah. That way, if we find a problem, we can remediate it. And so there are many safeguards in place and it's an evolving landscape. Um, I have a talk later today where I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can use models in an adversarial way. One model that's supposed to generate the output, another one that evaluates that output. And that's a research area that we're focused on as well. So many different safeguards in place, including people always in the loop, including the end user, right? So. Yeah. You know, when, when we deliver this content, ultimately we put that content in the hands of a user who's responsible for it. Yeah, and it's a really important point to emphasize um, because I know we always want the human-centric nature of that going yep. on. So as we wrap, um, ultimately what can customers expect next from Workday, especially in the generative AI space? Yeah, so the thing I'm most, so we announced these use cases, which are great, you can see those. Please drop by the ML booth and, and check those out with my team if you haven't had a chance to see them. Find Shane, he's willing Find to Find me, I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I probably won't, my demo will probably fail, but I'll get somebody more, <laughs> more, more skilled to do it. Um, but what I'm most excited about is the pace at which we can do this safely. We've invested in a platform where we have a lot in place that allows us to monitor what we're doing, it allows us to evaluate it very effectively, but we also have tremendous velocity on delivering yeah. these. So this is really tip of the iceberg, and so I, I just love seeing that. AI is now a core technology for Workday. When I, when I came, it was some features. Now it's a core technology for Workday. Well, and a lot of the things we're sharing this week and even further, um, aren't just what we're talking about. They're real product and they're coming to customers very soon and yeah. that floodgate has opened yeah. for sure. Absolutely. Um, well, thank you to those who are tuning in. Next up, Chandler Morse, Workday's VP of Public Policy and Victoria Espinel, CEO of BSA, the Software Alliance. will explore the balance between AI innovation and regulation.